Welcome back to our next segment on building bone mass, getting them bone gains bone on gains. point. Bone gains for uh, trying to create a more durable bone, a more healthy bone, a more thick, robust bone. Um, we've had a couple of questions uh, in the past. Um, people don't really understand the ways to do that maybe correctly, um, but there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of really good research that we're gonna talk about that really supports these these couple of suggestions that we're gonna make. So, yeah. uh, especially if you're someone who has osteoporosis or osteopenia, this is a very important talk for you to listen to. It is. It is. Um, so first, uh, bone mass is not necessarily limited by the age or the sex of the patient trying to increase their bone mass. Yes, there is trends. Definitely there's trends in, in seeing losses and, uh, and sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult for a certain population, but there can be gains. Um, there can be gains in bone mass, um, whether you're a 40, 50, 60 year old female, male, you're a 15 year old female, whatever it is, there is ways to overcome some of that stuff, um, given the right environment and giving the right, uh, the right stresses onto your body. Yep. Yep, you can gain bone, you can gain muscle, and even in cases of osteoporosis and osteopenia, you can make positive changes in your bone health at any age. And that's really important because our bones are what keep us upright. It's what prevents us from sustaining major injuries to our internal anatomy. So we wanna make sure that these areas on our body are as strong as can be. But everyone's probably wondering, how How do we do this, docs? How do you do that? Well, we'll talk about that. So, uh, first up is when we introduce stresses to our bones, um, not like you're trying to make your car payment or you're uh, stressed because COVID's doing something to you. Um, we're talking about stress being having to move your body, your bones pull on your, or your uh, muscles pull on your bones and that creates a stress at the bone. Um, that is the stress we're talking about. When we, when we increase that stress or we introduce that stress more often, our body is going to be pretty intelligent saying, okay, well, I need to create more bone mass so that I'm not getting this stress that is actually going to deteriorate my bones, actually going to build it up. So we want to introduce those stresses often and with more and more gradual progression so that your bones become stronger and stronger and stronger. Yep, it's just like if you've... Uh done any weightlifting for an extended period of time, you might look at your hand and notice that you got some calluses building up. Yeah. And the reason why those calluses build up is because you're stressing your hands mm -hmm. by gripping things for extended periods of time. Building bones works the same way. You stress the bone system by doing things like lifting weights uh, or by any type of high impact activity and the bones have to adapt accordingly so your body can do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we say, especially in cases of osteoporosis and osteopenia, it's especially important to do through the spine because that's one of the areas that in those populations, um, they're at higher risk of developing a fracture. So anything where you're getting the spine loaded, that includes squats, that includes deadlifting, that even includes overhead pressing. Doing activities like that can be very helpful for improving your bone density and health. Absolutely, yeah, spine loading, um, getting that stuff in. And then if we wanna look at, uh, at frequency, um, so if we're trying to understand how often should we be doing this, um, it's just like any other participant in a, in a sport or a, a new training program. We, got to, we have to have these uh, graduations. We have to have uh, an introductory uh, starting point, and then we build from there. Um, there's not gonna be a golden number for every single person. Some people have more training age than others. Um, so uh, on the front end, um, we would want to explore that. We want to see how long it takes for them to recover from uh, a training session. And we're going to start very slow, uh, low weights, and then we'll bump up gradually. Um, that doesn't give us a finite answer. Do you have any finite answers that you would uh, start someone with for uh, Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can gain appreciable muscle mass just by training twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the the uh, amount of sets, reps, and all that you should start with. 
for most beginners, working in the 8 to 12 rep range is a very good starting point. That's enough where it's heavy enough that you're going to stress the body accordingly, um, but not too much. Because sometimes if you go way too high in reps, you're not going to get adequate stress to stimulate bone. That's why uh, running, for example, hasn't been shown, or, or any type of aerobic exercise hasn't shown to be as helpful for increasing bone density as resistance training. And you, in terms of number of sets, that's going to depend on what your training age looks like. Some beginners can get significant improvements by just doing one set mm -hmm. of an activity. And it doesn't have to be back squats, it could be machines. Mm -hmm. It could be anything that gets your muscles stressed. That's a good starting point. So at least twice a week, go 8 to 12 rep range as a starting point. If you're new, start with one set. You can work up to three or four sets if you're feeling frisky. And I think that the definitely need to hear that again is uh, you know you you don't have to start with back squats you don't have to start with like really intimidating movements uh, until you build up a little threshold for that um, if you have someone that's uh, pretty intelligent for training and uh, building a program then they can create ways that you can succeed um, and and make that that experience that progression very uh, very smooth. It doesn't you don't have to take a bunch of time off because oh yeah you flared up a, a, an old injury or you or you've irritated something. So um, know that it's not just you know back squatting and and doing stuff that's going to load the spine. There's other ways to load the spine without doing that exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, so look seek out a professional that can give you those options and can and create an experience that will be beneficial to you. Um, and then after that, we have foods and whole foods. We have foods and whole foods. Now, you don't have to go to whole foods to get yeah. your foods. <laughs> um, strength training is one way that you can build muscle mass and bone density, but there's also getting nutrients in your body to also help do that. So yeah, yeah, calcium, you ask exactly, calcium, magnesium, protein, a lot of your minerals, all of that stuff is required for your, your bones to get bigger and, and, and be built. So you need to ensure that you're eating foods that are rich in those things. And an easy tip that you can incorporate today, when next time you go to the grocery store, is to just walk around the perimeter and get foods that live in that area. So produce, meats, um, dairy products, dairy anything sense. like that, that is a whole food that has few ingredients, likely has a lot of nutrients that can help you build stronger bones. Yep, fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, those types of things that are in its, its truest form, not uh, you know put in packaging and been processed and all that kind of stuff. It usually tends to make those a little less valuable in terms of nutrients. Um, try to get those ones that are in its, its kind of most natural forms. Um, so whole foods. Uh, another thing, um, this is more for the just digestive uh, health is trying to sit down and chew your food a little bit better um, give yourself that time I've been experiencing this uh, a lot recently um, giving yourself the amount of chews necessary for your body to actually get those nutrients out is really important mm -hmm. uh, with whole foods it's it's a little it takes more time it, it is because you are taking it from you know, it's natural for, or it's most natural form and trying to break it down a lot. Um, so take the time to, t uh, to get extra chews in, extra, you know, grinding that stuff down because it does help with uh, getting all those nutrients out of there. Absolutely, and it can help with things like blood sugar and things like that. If you're chewing like 30 chews, I believe it, the research yeah, was. 20 or 30, 20 something, 30 like that. something like that. Something like that. Um, it's hard to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very tough. Our culture does not... Uh, no. Does, it doesn't promote that a lot. Um, you know, we're trying to woof some stuff down and get on with the rest of our day. Yep, yep, absolutely. So big three keys. Bone mass, you can build it at any age, doesn't matter who you are. The second one, you need to stress your body to increase bone mass. So lift some weights, get strong, do it a couple times a week, 8 to 12 reps. And last but not least, eat some whole foods, chew slowly, stay around the perimeter mm. of your grocery store, and you are going to be rocking it. Yep. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out, 702-558-2151. Look at me. Wow, and Woo! boom. You didn't think you had it, folks. He's had it this whole time. He had it this whole time. Or you can reach out to us on the web, and we can help you out. Elevate Sports Performance and Healthcare. If you look up elevatesph.com, we can work with you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.